Okay, well, we left off in part one, just having a quick preview of this, the scrolling platform game, um, complete with power-ups that enable us to finally uh, wreak our revenge upon the monsters in the game. Let's look at how we actually did the scrolling, and the first thing we did was implement a new layer class. This replaced the texture 2D used on levels, and it contains a scroll rate for both horizontal and vertical scrolling. And we'll use that data in our camera calculations to work out how far the back layer, layer moves. But you can see there in our level class we've just altered um, the type of that array for our layers from texture 2D to layer. Okay, let's look at the scrolling detail. Now in the um, draw method of the level we are now um, calculating um, the layers movement by using a camera position and the camera is really just showing how much of the background is going to be visible um, the backgrounds are in fact um, three times the length of the default screen of the game when you put them all together. Now we actually um, work through drawing up all the gems and the tiles etc um, and then we draw separately the actual background layers um, all of which will have been incremented specific to whether they're background, midground or foreground um, because each one of those will scroll at a different rate to give us that parallax style um, scrolling. Now that calculation is all done um, using layer details but in the scroll camera method and scroll camera method is completely new. We have uh, a hash if for the zoom just so we look further afield um, on the zoom than we would on the Xbox and Windows. That's further afield in our graphics context. Um, and then we're really just working through setting up the calculations for our camera, working out what the various margin definitions are, um, and then determining where the player is in relation to the boundaries, the left or right or top or bottom boundaries of the screen. And that then enables us to do these calculations at the bottom here to work out um, how far we're going to move the camera in any one direction. We use the math helper dot clamp method which means that we don't move the camera beyond our maximum boundaries. Now one of the other features once we've done scrolling to fill out the game and to really finish it technically is to provide it with a number of different screens and we've done this using the game state management example from the XNA Creators Club. So you have a screen manager now and this manages a stack of screens that are in play being displayed. So this it results in quite a serious alteration to the platformer game class because the platformer game class was previously where everything happened for the game and we've now pulled all of that out of the platformer game class and put it into a game play screen class. The platformer game class is now just set up really um, to load up the screen manager, add it as a XNA component to the game and then to load up the first screen. So you can just see the screens are a composite there. There's a background screen and a main screen. Now all the gameplay functionality, as I said, is now moved into this gameplay screen, which is of type game screen from the screen manager classes. And really, all I've had to do is move across the gameplay methods, load content, for example, handle, uh, input, um, load next level, all those different methods have just come across to this new uh, class with very little modification. I first thought I'd end up having to do a lot of changes but in the end all I have to do is make a few mods and being able to use the screen manager means I can put in finished screens, uh, pause screens, have uh, option menus, all sorts of things. Some of the changes just uh, to note are handle input um, required a modification so it could now take the input state class as an output of um, the screen manager structure and that just enables us to have consistent input state that everything's working across um, supplied to handle input by the screen manager call to handle input and the screen manager now fronts all those game properties that we would have previously just access directly so to get the sprite batch and other things we have to use screen manager if you want to know more, 
have a look at the detailed blog on whatyoudo.net and the examples on creators.xna.com.